one of the most appropriate things about the poem known as the ruin is its title. Uh, we have it in just uh, damaged fragments, part of the, uh, the so-called Exeter book of British lyrics that uh, come down to us from the uh, molten period of British history in the wake of the, uh, the Roman exodus and before 1066 when as a nation it was struggling to identify itself uh, amid uh, invasions and tribal warfare among, uh, among the natives. It's coming to us as a, uh, as, as a little snippet of a perspective that I think is really the most important thing. The, uh, the relationship of the present to the past and the relationship of an individual voice to, uh, to a tradition that, uh, that I find really pretty evocative. Among the Exeter book um, works, it is a bit of a standout. Uh, the, uh, the others, the most commonly known others, are the Wayfarer, the Seafarer, or the, uh, the Wayfarer, the Seafarer, the, uh, um, the Wanderer, rather, the Seafarer, and the, uh, the Wife's Lament, um, the Husband's Message. These are, these are more properly elegies, which, uh, which strike a somewhat a melancholy view of something lost, something that uh, of the of the past that has uh, that is now uh, nostalgically considered. There's uh, there is sort of that going on here, but it is a much more objective look at things. It's less. Uh, it's less elegiac. It is less uh, mournful. It takes note of an awful lot of destruction and the uh, the wreckage of the past, but it doesn't necessarily seem sad about it. The ambiguity is uh, is really quite striking. The ambiguity with which the uh, the poetic uh, voice. Uh, considers everything that he or she sees is really quite striking. Look at the elaborate crests chiseled into this stone wall, shattered by fate, the crumbled city squares, and the hue and cry of giants rotted away. There are caved-in roofs, towers in shambles, lime on the rhyme on the limey mortar, a storm wall tilted and scarred, half fallen, slumped by time. An earthly embrace holds the royal architects rotting in their graves and lost to the cruel grip of the ground, while a hundred generations passed away. This wall, mapped in vain by, light, by lichen, stained with red, outlasted one kingdom after another, Long stood upright after storms, lofty and broad. It has fallen. The rampart, hewn and wedged together, sharpened roughly and polished, an ancient structure well worked by men, ringed with incrustations of soil, still prods the brain and draws up a fiery clue. Clever in the forging of chains, some bold-minded man, bound together the ribs of the wall with amazing cables. There were bright city plots linked by bathhouses, a wealth of high towering gables, much clamor of the multitude, many mead halls filled with revelry, until a, a mighty lot changed that. Far and wide people fell dead, days of pestilence ran rampant, and death clobbered ranks of the infamous swordsmen. Their fortress became a tomb, the city rotted away. Those who should have braced it up, the multitudes, were bones on the ground. Then the courts knelt in dust, and the wide red roof of the vaulted beams was left shedding tiles. This ritual place fell into ruin and piled up heaps where once stood those light-hearted with gold, clothed in splendor, proud and lifted by wine, shorn in war gear and gazed upon a treasure of wealth and inlaid plated gems on wealth and property on precious stones and this glorious citadel of a stout kingdom 
and the stone court stood upright, and the warming stream spouted its whole surge, and the wall hugged everything to its bosom, where the baths were steamy in its heart. Streams poured across hot gray stones until the round pool heated. It is still a fitting thing for this city. Hmm. Quite the imagery here. Um, the imagery drives it. Uh, there's not a lot of commentary going on here. Uh, it is a, uh, a panoramic view of, uh, of destruction, of ruins. Now, this is England. Uh, there's a lot of speculation about, well, where in England might it be? How historically, how literally can we take this document? Um, and the general consensus, for whatever that's worth, is that this, uh, the focus on bathhouses suggests that this is, in fact, the, the city of Bath in the southwest corner of England. Uh, a, a, a Roman stronghold uh, for quite some time and at around the time roughly 8th century that people think that this might have been composed it would have looked fairly uh, beaten up like this so th there is that um, other scholars like to debate well no it's really closer to like this is really more about Hadrian's wall up north and you know I, I don't know I don't care the uh, the sense is that this is in the wake of a civilization uh, a civilization that has fallen into uh, into devastation and the emotional uh, impact of it is really quite muted because the, the poetic voice is sitting there and clocking all of this destruction, all of this devastation, um, and seems rather disgusted by it. Uh, the, uh, the wall, mapped and veined by, late, by lichen, stained with red, outlasted one kingdom after another, long stood upright after storms, lofty and broad. It has fallen. Simple. All those things, sure, it all falls away. And here you can see, okay, this is a uh, an example of uh, perhaps this is elegiac, but this is an example of the uh, all things come uh, come and go, all things pass. Uh, the, uh, the there is a sense of um, inevitability in all this. The, uh, the, the classic trope of, well, the mo once mighty civilization uh, the, uh, has fallen away. And certainly at the time that this would have been written, uh, that would be a valid uh, description of Rome. Uh, Rome pulled out of England uh, um, several centuries before and then collapsed under its own weight itself. Um, the empire swept away. And England entered into what was a, a fairly uh, uh, dark medieval period uh, where the, the entire island was racked by, uh, by internecine battles between the uh, various indigenous peoples and uh, the raiding marauders coming in from Europe and uh, all the, the, the fighting that was going on. And you can see a lot of the uh, the values of that period playing out here. They uh, the voice seems to take some consideration of uh, uh, of the uh, the warrior attitudes, the warrior beliefs and value systems. The uh, there's the call out to the Mead Hall, to the um, uh, to the infamous swordsman. Uh, but it, it's never quite certain how, um, how much uh, validation uh, the voice is granting that civilization. It seems on the one hand to be kind of enamored of it, uh, and on the other hand just be a little bit repulsed by it. That long uh, peroration at the end um, where it's celebrating all the different uh, uh, well, it's celebrating, it's naming all of the different uh, 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 valuables, let's say. Um, this ritual place fell into ruin and piled up heats where once there stood light-hearted, those light-hearted with gold, 
clothed in splendor, proud and lifted by wine, shorn in war gear, and gazed upon a treasure of silver and inlaid plated gems of wealth and prosperity, on precious stones in this glorious citadel of, of a stout kingdom, and the stone courts uh, stood upright. This is all a very uh, curiously ambiguous uh, list of worldly goods and wealth that uh, the voice behind the uh, behind the poem seems to, on the one hand, be a little fascinated, be a little intrigued and attracted to, and on the other hand, is perhaps a little repulsed by. And you can see in that a little bit of the clash of the uh, the pagan, uh, Celtic, perhaps uh, pre-Christian era. And the uh, and 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 a new newer uh, impulse of Christianity. This is the same period, roughly, at, that produced Beowulf. This is the same period, roughly, that produced the Dream of the Rood. And the the typology of all this is interesting, where the Dream of the Rood is about uh, superimposing the cross as the figure of uh, of worship in place of or as a symbol for the man and the beliefs, the actuality has become a, uh, something abstract. And here we're sitting there and staring at these ruins and trying to come to a uh, definition of them and the significance of them and struggling for some notion of meaning amid a, amid a scene of absolute devastation.